surrounding churches in Fair Riverside, we also San Bernardino. Uh, and I'd like to pray for all the all the souls that we touched yesterday. Uh, yeah, we had a good yeah. turnout. Uh, uh, hopefully we see them more and we follow up on them and, and yes. just continue to grow uh, the Destiny Hoopa Valley. Yes. So let's uh, worship God as we open up in prayer. Father God, we'd like to thank you for another day you allowed us to gather in your house, Lord. Father, we ask that you uh, bless the word we're about to receive. You open up our hearts. We ask that you uh, that you touch the the people that we met with yesterday, God, and bring them in here uh, for salvation, God. And we ask that you keep our family, our loved ones in prayer, God, whether it's for, uh, keep your hand upon them, God, whether it's for uh, healing, financial blessings, or whatever it may be, God, whatever troubles we have. Uh, we ask that you keep your hand upon us, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And take time to greet someone this morning. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Amen. This morning, this morning we got some uh, announcements. Um, before we uh, continue, I want to ask you if, uh, if you can keep uh, Alex's dad in prayer. His name, uh, his name is Guy. He's in the hospital and he needs a touch of God. He needs a, uh, a healing, a miraculous healing. So if you can keep him in prayer, those of you here, those of you watching online. Also for the, the Arias family, from uh, uh, George, his uh, he went to be with the Lord last week, and I want to pray for his family. We keep his family in prayer. Um, that God will just be with them, and that God will use this as as a time um, of dedication to God. That they would that they would um, that they would draw closer. That they would draw closer to to God at the, in this time. Um, but uh, we have some announcements, and I'm trying to get them up on my screen here. Amen. So I want to remind you of our regular services every Sunday morning at 10, every Wednesday at 7. Don't forget to follow us on YouTube, uh, Facebook, and watch us on YouTube. The promotional video that, that, that we made for our rally, it's on our YouTube page, the New Destiny Drupal Valley YouTube page. And you're going to see it all over um, Facebook and the internet. Amen. Um, I sent it out to all the pastors last night. And sent it up and uh, posted it, so it'll be everywhere here. Um, so, <clears throat> don't forget uh, August the nineteenth. It's a Saturday, uh, ten forty-five. There is a woman's class at the Montebello Church um, with Sister uh, Debbie and Sister Patty. Amen. It's going to be a good, good time. Good sisters, good women of God. So, I want to encourage you women to be a part of that. August nineteenth. On these, on these events, these men's classes, these women's classes, um, we really count on you guys participating, those of you guys at home, uh, to participate and come be a part of it. This is our, this is opportunity um, to, get, to get blessed, to be spoken to. And, and Martha and I, we actually rearrange our lives around this stuff because we wanna, we wanna make sure we're available to take you guys because these are very important. These, these will help change your life, amen. So I wanna encourage you to be a part of that. Uh, looking forward to September, uh, Saturday, uh, August 26th. We're going to go down and see uh, Batasad uh, play at the San Diego Church. 
uh, go down there, support it, want to make a day of it, we can go down there, do something, get to go a little earlier in the day, go get something to eat, do something, we'll figure out something to do, we can talk about it. But let's go down there and support them, and then we'll come back and, and just have a good time. And uh, But you, you won't be disappointed, they're, good, they're a good group, amen. And uh, Bob Tassati is a new pastor, he just got launched out uh, um, at the Tijuana Conference, good guy. Um, and uh, we're already talking about getting with him to go help out, reach for him like what we did here yesterday, amen. Uh, men's class, um, this is our New Destiny Regional, Southern California Regional Men's Class. Uh, we do this about every month and a half or so. And this one, Panorama City, Pastor Alex Alcido, he'll be uh, hosting it. We wanna make sure that we go, amen. So, amen, if you're a man, amen, you'll go, amen. Yeah. Let's go, let's go be men of God. Let's go see what God has for our lives. Again, these are things that, that my wife and I, we put our, our time aside. Let me tell you, um, if you have something that's important to do on that day, uh, let me just tell you, September 2nd is my 31st wedding anniversary and I'm gonna be there. So you let me know if you have something more important than a 31st wedding anniversary so we can go. So let's make it, let's go be a part of what God's doing. This is important, amen, to, be, to support and be a part of, of what God has for us and, and to hear from God. Uh, we are now down to the taking the land rally. All the the outreach is leading up to it. The, we've gained momentum. Yesterday we had our outreach here. Uh, we had man, we had a lot of people. We had a lot of people. Uh, Brother Johnny brought the truck and and the trailer. We set up on the back of it. We gave out snacks for kids, ice creams. We we went and street preached, stood on the trailer, walked around, did all kinds of things, made a bunch of noise. You know what? It, it really set a, set a pace, set a tone. And and we're in a neighborhood with a lot of fences. And usually, you know, it's been my experience, we go to a neighborhood with a lot of fences, nobody comes to the fence. Amen. We made enough noise, everybody came out of the house. Amen. And people were open, people were excited, people were, were grateful that we're there. We're going to continue going back and back to it. The churches that came to help us, uh, Riverside, Rialto, and San Mardino, they were excited for what, what was going on. The people were excited. We're really gaining momentum for this. Um, I don't know how we're going to do this, but we want to try to do it one more time in Riverside, around the Riverside Church, because that's where we're going to have this rally at, to, to kind of get the people in that neighborhood involved to go to the rally. Um, but all of our days are so booked um, leading up to the rally. Um, so I don't know, we'll, we'll probably do an outreach during the week or something, maybe a Friday night, um, go make some noise on Friday night, amen. Everybody's trying to go out and party Friday night, so let's go over there and, 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 uh, and disrupt their, their high and everything and get them sober and, and saved and serving God, amen. So uh, that'll be coming up, but this is an important event. Um, make yourself available, do whatever you got to do, be there. It's Friday night and Saturday morning. We are going to be feeding people on Saturday. After the services, we're going to be giving. Uh, we're going to be feeding people in the. We're going to have a break on Saturday morning. We we'll have two services, a break, and then the third service. During that break, we're going to be giving coffee and donuts or whatever. We're going to give as a snack. After the service, we're going to be feeding them food. Amen. So we need all hands on deck to help us and to, to make this successful. It's all four churches. This is all of our our thing. We're all being participating in it. You'll see all four pastors uh, on the platform. All of us will be up there directing and helping and, and lifting the offerings and doing everything. This is our event, so we wanna make sure that we're available for this. F September 15th, it's the night service, and then the 16th, it's the morning services. Amen, you do not want to miss this, amen. Um, revivals in Tijuana and Rosarito, September and October. Make yourselves available if you guys can make it. Um, we're gonna have a good time down there. The Tijuana, the Tijuana one, amen, the pastor there, he bought some land. Uh, a couple years ago and he's and he's building a building there he's, he has a lot of it erected already but he's still working on it so it's going to be exciting to see how god moves uh in other countries amen so if you could be there that's a friday and saturday if you could be there amen it's, it'll, be, it'll be a blessing to your life amen and these are all the announcements uh we're going to lift up an offering amen so let's worship god amen as worship comes forward Amen. This this uh, this morning, you give with an open heart. You know, we uh, the four pastors uh, Friday night, we all went out to dinner um, together, which was which is an amazing thing for us because we don't all all of our schedules don't always line up.
but we all made time to make uh, to go to dinner on um, on Friday night to go over the the plan, the schedule, and everything for for this uh, this coming rally. You know, we give we give our tithes, Amen, and we give a, our offerings besides, Amen, and we and, and God is really moving in our lives. I'll tell you, God has really blessed my life. Um, I don't know how I make time for it, but I'm working two jobs and and the ministry and everything else, man, and 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 God God stretches my day to make it work, and uh, and He's stretching our finances. Um, this rally, just give you guys an idea, it's going to cost all four churches quite a bit of money, and we're going to um, we're we're all invested in this. It's not a Riverside Church event. This is an Inland Empire event, so the four churches are all. Um, are all um, sharing in the cost, the cost of the preachers and the hotels and the food and everything involved. We're all sharing in the cost of it. Um, tomorrow, I'm going to be sending out mailers with the with the flyer, with the with hotel information and a letter um, to all the churches, um, uh, so they can so they, you know, to give them a formal invitation. All that costs us money. So. Um, I'll be I'll be uh, lifting up a pledge for for the rally. This is our rally. Uh, those of you, you know, we do got people who watch online. So even you, those of you guys who watch online, um, this is your this is your opportunity to be a part of what God's doing. And during the rally, make yourself visible in person mm -hmm. uh, for the rally. Um, but the rally is going to cost all four churches quite a bit of money. Um, we're looking at we're gonna one of the we're gonna buy pizzas and chickens. You know we're gonna order forty pizzas, hey amen. So you guys eat pizza, you can do the math. <laughs> it gets pretty expensive pretty fast. Um, so what we're asking is I'm gonna be lifting up an offering, and and uh, I want you guys to think about it. Okay, I want you guys to pray about. it. I'm not gonna tell you right now to 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 commit to a, to an amount. But what I'm gonna ask you is I want you to pray about it this week because next Sunday I'm gonna ask you to. To either give the offering and write it on the paper that it was for the it was for the rally, or uh, or put a paper in the basket saying this is what I will give by the first of September for the rally, because we need to cover these expenses. Um, I do these events and I just do them. I, I can I don't care if we have money or not. If I sit there and wait until we have money, we'll never get nothing done. I just say, look, God, we're going to do it. Your will, your bill. Let's take care of business, and God always comes through. So so. Just letting you know, this rally it is going to cost, and it, and it is our expense as a church. So let's let's come together and and, and participate, be a part of it. And next week, I will be I will be asking you guys for your commitment to to bring an offering for the rally by the beginning of by the first Sunday of, of September, so we can make sure we cover all these expenses, um, hotels alone, amen. Because we got three guest preachers coming in, amen. And we still got to give them offerings, and we still got to buy all the food. Amen. We're looking at over 400 pieces of chicken. We're looking at 40 pizzas. We're looking at drinks and desserts. I mean, it's a lot. But uh, but I know we can do it. I know we can do it. We wanna we wanna we wanna bless. Amen. All the, all of our visitors that are gonna come and be a part participate. What we did yesterday is the momentum, and what we're gonna do what we're gonna do on the 15th and 16th is the blessing that's gonna overflow upon your life. Amen. So be prepared. Remember, be faithful with your tithes, with your offerings. Be faithful with missions. Uh, today is the 13th. I will be sending our missions uh, um, offering um, in two days on the 15th. I send them the 15th every month to Colombia, Peru. Amen. Participate in that. Give for that. Amen. Um, we send $100. The four churches all put in $100. And that goes in regardless if it comes in through the offering or not. We send it regardless. Um, so sometimes the church pays for it, sometimes we pay for it. But either way, it's going to get paid for because we want to reach the world for Jesus. So be a part of that and allow God to bless your life. Amen. So let's bow our hearts, amen, as, as Brother Angel bless the gift and the giver. Father God, we ask you to bless these tithes and offering for the Lord this morning, God. We ask you to bless those that continue to give faithfully into your kingdom, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And what mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. The angels bow before him and at the door. What a mighty God we serve. You know, pretty soon we're going to actually have live music. 
You know, you know that when 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 we step into having live music, you come to church and you see the size of our church and you see the same faces. We have some other faces that don't come all the time, but they are part of our church. They they do watch. We do have people that do watch faithfully online, uh, and I know they do because they'll message me. You know, like we have um, uh, Juan, brother Juan Guzman, and, and sister Alvia. You know, they 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 watch online, and and they give to the church. You know, they're part of our church. Uh, we have Millie and, and Johnny who can't make it down here all the time because they live in the mountains, and they watch online. And we got we got a lot of people, like Sister Dora in Arizona, she'll watch online, and 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 and, and so there's 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 what there's more to what what we have here than what you see, and and God's really moving, and and you have no idea how excited I am about what God's doing in this place, but the 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 thing is 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 when when we step into things like like ministries, the music ministry, um, having uh, uh, Angel up here helping with song service and that kind of stuff. What that does, you may not realize it, but that shows a level of maturity in the church. Yeah. It, shows, it, shows, it shows the hearts of people who are who have making decisions for God and saying, you know what, I, I know i got to do certain things in my life so I can so I can allow God to move in other lives and, and it's 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 self-sacrifice and, and commitment and that's a sign of a healthy church it's a sign of of a, of, of of maturity in a church and going into where you know we've been so busy and and sometimes you might be like well we're not that busy but well, me and Martha we're like extremely busy um, and as we go into our winter time, we're going to we're going to shift our, our, our schedule a little bit to accommodate that because we're going to begin to we're going to begin to build spiritually. We're going to begin to to get into prayer. I want the church. We, we, the church needs to be a, a church of prayer. We need to be a church of faith. And we're going to begin to have prayer, prayer meetings and, and intercessory. And we're going to we're going to we're going to really reach the throne of Christ. And and it's not that we don't do it now, but I mean we're gonna we're gonna really step in because we are moving into another level of maturity um, as a church. Mm -hmm. September is next month. August first marked five years that I received a key to a building in Drupal Valley. Mm -hmm. September next month will be five years that we've been open as a church. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, I gotta go and I gotta go to the county and renew. Our um, our our name and stuff, or we have a name and everything registered with the county. I gotta go and renew that. It's good for every five years. And God's really moving, and we're at that time in the church where we're we're on time. We're right on time. We're not we're not behind. We're not ahead. We're on time. Yeah. Things that are going on here, they're going on on time. It's what we're supposed to be doing. It's where we're supposed to be. Um, we could be more, and I think we are a little bit more than, than a lot of churches, even churches that have been around even longer than us, and that's because of our, our international portion of our ministry. You know, we have some other churches that have really taken off in that, like the, the New Hope churches, you know, Pastor Mondo and Abe, they really, when they, as soon as they started, they were running, running to Mexico and South America. Same thing with Pastor uh, Junior in Palmdale. Same thing. He's he's made a commitment to go out there and be a part of that. And as we're in, as we're developing, we've really taken a part and we're reaching the world for Jesus. But we got to be prepared. Mm -hmm. See, we're given everything we need to be a successful Christian. Yeah. So I want you to listen. We're, 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 we have been given everything we need to be a successful Christian. In life, you're going to have a job. You're going to have a career. You need to you need to begin to think about okay, what's my career? What am I going to do? What, what 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 can I do that this is this defines who I am as a professional? And you get a career. And once you begin to have a career, young especially young people, they're thinking about the future. Um, I need a career. I need something that it's going to establish me. Young people who want to get married, they understand that 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 you ain't getting married if you ain't got a job. You're not gonna you're not gonna you're not gonna get married if you if your ambition isn't to own own your own home. 
because you got you got to have that, that that drive. You got to have it. But in Christianity, we can't approach it with, well, I, I go to church, so that's enough. You see, God has given us everything we need to be successful Christians. Yeah. And I say successful Christians because there's so many unsuccessful Christians out there in Christianity. Mm -hmm. Christians who go to church and declare Christianity and determine that they are saved, but still live like devils. Uh -huh. You see, God has given us everything we need to be successful. He has taught us purity. He has taught us sanctification. He has taught us how to live correctly. He has given us the ability to be overcomers when it comes to addictions and, and, and how to, to, to push aside lustful desires. He has given us everything we need to refrain from speaking like, 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 like a foul trucker or, or, or a sailor. He has given us everything we need to be, to be successful. We are given the Word of God. We are given the Holy Spirit for comfort and direction. <clears throat> But the problem is, with everything given to us, we are still caught being unprepared. So many Christians, as we live for God, we get into situations in our life where we do not know the answer. We do not know where to go. We do not know where to turn. It is amazing to me how many Christians that I've talked to over the years that, that they'll sit there and they'll have these issues and they'll have these problems and, 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 and they go through things. And you know what the Bible says? We're in this world. We're just not of the world. So that means we're going to go through some things. Yeah. But in, in Christianity, there's so many people who are, who are, who are Christians. Amen. Uh, they wear the shirt. Amen. They, they, they wear the Christian shirt and the Christian clothes. But they don't have the simple answer that they need when it comes to when they, when they hit a time of trial. You come to a time in your life where, 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 where problems hit you, and, and what we do is we begin to crumble instead of stand stronger. And, 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 and the answers are simple. God has given them to us, but we become so unprepared to, to withstand the wiles of the devil that before you know it, we're stumbling, and we're going backwards and going back to the very thing that God has removed us from. The book of Proverbs, it says, it says that it, it, it's, it's, it, it's, it's like a dog returning to his vomit. And that's what it is for us when we, when we leave God and we go back to the life that we had. We go back to the sin that we came from. It's like, it's like a dog when he goes back to his vomit and he begins to lick it up and eat it. That's what that is. There's so many Christians that live a life where they're unprepared. Although God has given them everything they've needed, uh, they, they become so unprepared that, that, that they don't move forward in the things of God. Because we, we use the, especially in America, we use the title Christian so loosely. Right. Everybody's a Christian today. Right. I was talking with Pastor Rudy yesterday <coughs> from San Bernardino, and, and we... He said the same thing I'm always saying. He goes, I can't stand when people say we're believers. Mm -hmm. It irritates, it bugs me. Believe I'm a believer. Get tattoos. Believer. <laughs> Believe me. How about a good tattoo of a dummy? Because that's what you are. If, you, what are you getting, if you're a Christian, what are you getting tattoos for? It makes no sense. Mm -hmm. It's just it's no sense. And so many people are afraid of it. You know, we're talking about how, 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 how there's Christians who are preachers preaching the gospel and preaching the truth, and then after they get so popular, with so many followers, so many people watching them, they're getting thousands of people viewing their services, that before you know it, they get censored. Facebook will kick them off of Facebook and say, you can't preach that over, over, our, over our platform because it's too offensive. Where I'm preaching on Facebook right now, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you right now, homosexuality is a sin, Come on, that's right. and that's what people are getting kicked off Facebook for. People are getting kicked off Facebook because they don't want to be told because they're sitting there saying that 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 a man is born a man, a man cannot become a woman. That's not the way it works. A man is a man, a woman is a woman. Mm -hmm. There is no there is no transition there. Mm -hmm. You are what you were born to be. You just decided you didn't like what God did with you. You decided that your thoughts are bigger than thoughts, God, God's thoughts. My Bible says that, that God's thoughts are higher than my thoughts and his ways are bigger than my ways. But when you decide that, 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 that how God perfectly uh, formed you and created you is not what you, you think is right and you want to be the opposite, then what you're saying is that, God, you made a mistake and my God don't make mistakes. 
And that's what people are being censored for. You see, Christianity is so much more than wearing a t-shirt that says, I am saved. It's much more than, 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 than writing down or, or putting a, a sticker of your favorite, your favorite scripture on the car. And Christianity is so much more than that. Christianity is living clean. It's being ready, being prepared because people are, are going to come into your life that are going to need Jesus. And what are you going to tell them? When somebody comes and tells you, amen, that they're tired of their life and, and, and you know what? They, all they want to do is die. What are you going to tell them? What are you going to say when, when, when life has attacked you so hard and those words come out of your mouth? See, we're living in a, we're living in a time of Christianity where, we, where, where Christians are becoming so unprepared because, because nobody wants to be bothered anymore. Right. Don't mess with my time. Don't mess with what I got. We have all these events coming up and you need to be there. Why? Because this is Christianity. Yeah. This is preparedness. This is kingdom business. You know, if you can't, you understand this, if you can't do it now here on earth, what makes you think you're going to fit into the schedule of God in heaven? Right. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Uh, I, I, I would go and pray, but I don't have time for prayer because I got to go to do this or I got to go do that. I already have plans, but, but, but you're missing the opportunity for the connection with Christ. And what happens is, is we believe, because we're believers, that, that it's going to be okay. God still loves me. I'm going to heaven. You can't even make it a prayer. How are you going to get to heaven? Right. It's a relationship. It's building. It's being prepared. It's understanding. We've got to be prepared when it comes to the things of God. So I want to read in the book of Matthew, chapter 25, beginning with verse 1. Matthew 25, you know, verse 1. <clears throat> Jesus is talking, he says, The kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went, to, went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. So those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should be not be enough for us and you. But go rather to those who sell and buy for yourself. Mm -hmm. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went in with him to the wedding. And the door was shut. Verse 11. Afterward, the other virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, As surely I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour which the Son of Man is coming. Amen. God, I pray God to bless your word. I thank you, Lord, just let me pray. The ten virgins were standing by for the bridegroom. So when he arrived, they would be able to enter into the wedding party. See, going to going to the wedding party for these for these for these virgins were, was an important thing. When you entered into the wedding party, it showed something to everyone else that was at the party. You see, in order to enter to the party, your lamp had to be lit. It means you had to be prepared. And the Bible talks about, Jesus is talking about the story about you have, you have ten virgins and five of them, all they brought was a lamp and what was in it? That was it. But the other five were wise. They had their lamp. They had the oil in their lamp. Plus they brought another vessel with extra oil. Because they wanted to make sure that their light would not dim out, dim out and fade away before the groom came. And the Bible says that, that when, when, the, when the, the ones that were foolish 
When the bridegroom finally came, they realized, oh, I don't have enough oil. How am I going to make it into the wedding party? And, and, and they asked the other ones, hey, let me have some of yours. Let me have some of yours. And they said, no, 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 no. You need to have your own. You can't get into this party with on, on my oil. You got to get in on your own oil. You see, in order for you to enter into that, to that wedding party, you have to be prepared. I'm prepared. I'm going in. You are not taking my, 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 my oil away from me. Go and buy your own. So as they go and buy their own, the bridegroom comes. And the, all the other five, they enter into the wedding party. And when the other ones come back, they say, let, it, let me in, let me in. I want to go inside the wedding party. I got my lamp now. I got my oil. I'm okay. He says, who are you? You're not allowed in here. Mm -hmm. I don't even know who you are. You're not on the list. You can't come into the party. You had your opportunity to be prepared. Yes. And you failed. And what Jesus is talking about, he's talking about the day that's going to come. See, see, there's going to be a day that we're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ, and we're going to be accounted for the things that we do here on earth and the things, the way we spend our time, what, the, what we account for, the, what, what, the abilities that we've had, and, and all the things that God has prepared us for, all the things that he has given us, everything that he has provided for us on whether or not we use them properly or decided to do anything with them. Was our agenda bigger than God's? And what he's talking about in this, in this parable is Jesus is talking about on the day comes of judgment, when you stand before the judgment seat of Christ, you're not going to have the ability to say, hold on, let me go back and get my faith. Mm -hmm. No, your faith had to have been built by the time you stand before Christ. That's right. He says you can't go back out and go find your faith once it's done. You're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. You have every opportunity to be prepared. You have the Bible. You have the church. You have the Word of God. You have each other. And he says that, you know what? You've had every opportunity to be prepared for what God's going to do in your life, but you decided to come unprepared. Mm -hmm. But God, don't you remember me? Don't you know me, homie? I went to the church all the time. Come on. He says, no. Uh-uh. He says, no. The wise one says, no, 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 no. You have no idea the price I paid for my oil. You have no idea the sacrifices I've made for my oil. You see, I have oil in my lamp. I turn on my lamp. I let my light so shine. I put my lamp on the hill so that others can see it. But when the judgment seat of Christ, and I'm standing there, and you're next in line, I can't give it none of that to you. I can only give it to you now. I can share my oil with you now. I can show you how to get it. I can show you where it's sold. I can show you how to provide, how to get be provided for. I can show you where it all comes. But the day of judgment, you can't say, Pastor Ben, can I have a little bit of that oil? I need a little bit more of that faith. I need a little bit more of the Spirit of God. I need a little bit more of touch of God. I, I can't do it at that time. We've given the opportunity now to be prepared for the things of God, for, for the judgment seat of Christ. We're being prepared, amen, for the kingdom of heaven. God, I want to make it to heaven, but I just I just won't sing in church. God, I'm going to make it to heaven, God, but I won't go to prayer. God, I'll make it to heaven, but I can't be on time. Do you see all these things? God, I will do, but I just can't. But you know me, God. You know me. You know my heart. And that's that's a scary thing. Don't ever get yourself caught up in saying that. Well, God knows my heart. Yeah, he does. He knows priorities. Right. There was a there was a, a little real thing on on Facebook, and it said it was a guy, a man that was walking walking away, and going into a, going going away and going into another room. And he says, "Me saying goodbye to my family because football season's starting, right?" And that's what happens. We say goodbye to we, we say goodbye to God because we have other things that are more prior, more prioritized. Where, where, where family is no longer party. I love my family, but you know what? Uh, I love my time better. I, 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 want my, I want my children to make it to heaven, but I want to go see the game first. I, 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 I want to be married and, and set free, and I want to have a godly man, but I want to, I want to go ahead and, and, and take a shortcut. There is no shortcuts in serving God. See, and if these people didn't make it to the wedding party, see, this was what was important. A woman in this time, the reason why he speaks of the ten virgins, 
is because the virgins were the ones that were preparing themselves for their for a man, for a man of God, to be married. You see, it was a time where where, where women desired to be to be married, and men desired to be married. Women couldn't desire to be ma married to a man if men weren't willing to be married. They were desire the, the desire at the time was was to come together and create families. It was an honor to come together and create families. It was it was it was noble to have a lot of children. So this was the thing. This was the thing to do. This was the popular thing. And the women who did not make it into the wedding party, who have been saving themselves in purity, didn't make it into the wedding party. All those in the wedding party, the other men that were in the wedding party were waiting for that one girl to come in. Where is she at? She, I know she was going to be here. She told me she was going to be here. I can't wait because it's going to be at this wedding party that I get to begin to court that girl, that I can begin to be prepared that she could be my wife. And that girl is waiting. He's inside. I got to get in there because you know what? The, that's the man that I want to be in. And I got to show up because I got to be prepared to be into the wedding party. But if she didn't have enough oil, she wasn't prepared. And everything she did to save herself and be pure was just diminished. And she was now, because she didn't enter into the party, she was found unworthy to be a wife. Yeah. Think about this. You're preparing your life, you're preparing yourself for the moment that you want for the victory in your life so you can begin to start a family, you can begin to do the things, that, and you can begin to have the things that you've always desired for since you were little. But then when the time comes, you find yourself so unprepared that the very person the very opportunity that was given to you, you missed it. Mm -hmm. And you picked one of the other five. Right. So it was important to be prepared to get into that party. It wasn't just that it was a wedding and Jesus was going to turn water into wine. That's not what was going on here. It was, it was, it was the opportunity to show others how prepared you are. We're giving opportunities all the time to show others how prepared we are. We're given opportunities every day as things come against us, as things come at us, as things are problems and things hit us, as other people are asking for advice, other people saying, pray for me. Things We're given opportunity every day to show our preparedness, to show how determined we are to make it to the finish line, how determined we are to make the kingdom of heaven our home. We are given these opportunities every day like, the, like, these, like these women were given. The opportunity to show that they were worthy of the wedding party. We're given these opportunities. But is our lamp running out of oil? So these women had potential. You know that when people say you have potential, have you ever been told that? I was told that a lot growing up. You have potential, you have a lot of potential. You know what they're actually saying? They're saying you have the ability to accomplish what you want and are able to be successful, but you're too lazy to do it. Mm -hmm. That's what potential is. Mm -hmm. You have potential, man. Man, that guy has potential. That woman has potential to do something for God. They have potential. They can really do it. They're smart enough to do it. They have the ability to do it. Man, they, they have that, just that thing, but they, man, they have the potential to do it. It's just too bad they're too lazy to get out of bed and do it. Mm -hmm. That's potential. I see guys all the time. I see guys at work all the time. They come in, they have a lot of potential. They're just lazy. There's a guy right now at work. He worked for another office. Built the company for years. He had a lot of potential. Great at his job. But he was lazy. So they brought him to me. I straightened him out, just got him to work again, threw him back into the field again. Talk is about getting rid of him now. We gotta get rid of the guy. Because he's has a lot of potential and everyone says the same thing. Man, he knows what he's doing, he's smart, he can do it, he's everything about his job, he's great. He's just lazy. We can't use a guy who's lazy. So you can have all the abilities, know how smart and 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 all that you you can have all the all this stuff in the world, but if you're not willing to get up and do it, what, what, what good is it? These 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 women, they had every opportunity in their life to preserve themselves and be presented before God to be married. 
They were too lazy to prepare themselves and miss the opportunity and the very calling of God in their life. The very calling. They have potential. See, the virgins were not prepared, and they had a lot of potential. They were in a position where, where they were not able to go and buy, buy anymore. They couldn't go and buy nothing. It was the middle of the night. They knew that the bride. They knew that as the bridegroom was coming, they would not be seen. Mm -hmm. They disqualified themselves. In other words, they quit. God's trying to move in, in, in our life. He's trying to push us forward. But we disqualify ourselves because we quit. I just can't do it, God. I just can't. You don't understand. I remember Pastor Harold, we're talking about somebody who quit their job. And I remember he told the guy, he goes, you quit? Man, only a fool fires himself. What did you quit your job for? Mm -hmm. You know that's what you do when you quit? You fire yourself. You tell yourself that you are not good enough to accomplish that. You're not a good enough. You know what? You have potential. You can do it. You're smart enough. You can handle these things. But you're too lazy to do it. I can't use you. And you quit. That's us telling our own self that we're too lazy to do it. That's what that's what that is. I you know, I'm not gonna do this anymore. I quit. I have a lot of potential, but I, I'm just not gonna do it. We fire ourselves. If you don't if you if you can't even fire, if you can't even keep yourself afloat. Well, you won't even give yourself the job. But yet we want to say, but Lord, let me in. I'm on the list. See, being prepared is important. But in order to have their lamp lit, when the bridegroom arrived, they had to preserve the oil. Those who were able to preserve the oil understood the value of the oil and the cost of having the oil. They knew that during the time the bridegroom was coming, is going, <coughs> going out and purchasing more was not going to be an option because it was a custom for the bridegroom to come at night. That's what the lamps were for. And, and that was probably because in the darkness, he would be able to see his bride afar off because of the light shining through the darkness. So there's going to be times in, in life that when you are going, that you're going to, you're going to need an answer from God. A time when your faith is going to be challenged. Has your faith ever been challenged? Mine has. When no one is available to give you the word of encouragement. There's going to be that time you're going to be stuck in the middle of the night. Nobody to talk to and you're going to need that word of encouragement. It might be a time that, that you are in, in, in desperate need. Or it might be a time when someone else is looking for, for the light from your lamp. We must be ready in season and out of season. The word of God is, 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 is a powerful and living thing that you may never know if you don't read it yourself. If you don't read the Bible yourself, you won't make it. You won't make it to the finish line. See, the finish line is the kingdom of heaven. If, you don't if you're not reading the Bible yourself, you're not going to make it to the finish line. You're, you're just not going to. Because you're living off of other people's knowledge and you're not taking time to let the word of God speak to you. You've got to read your Bible. If you're not praying, you're not going to make it to the finish line. You imagine these 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 women saved their entire life preparing for the moment to meet their, their, their husband and didn't make it inside the party. They didn't make it to the finish line. We're running a race. This is a marathon. And there is a finish line when we get to heaven. But do you realize that if we're not prepared, we can't enter into the wedding party. That's right. If we're not reading our Bible, what makes you think you're gonna you, you even that God's even gonna know who we are? You didn't take time to know who He is, but you want Him to know who you are? Come on. If we're not praying, if we're not seeking God. How do we expect God to say, "Oh, I know you who you are. Come in." You never talk to Him. We gotta be prepared. You can't get to the party and expect to just go in. There is no wedding crashers in heaven. 
It's you. You either you either earned you earned it, and you took time, and you and you decided, God, you are more important to me than anything anything else in life. Yeah. Or you decided that you know what, God, you, I'll let you in my life on my time, not yours. Mm. See, prayer will strengthen your faith, mm -hmm. but it can only do that if you're praying. You realize that prayer can really strengthen your faith. And build your relationship with God. It can lock you in with God, man. You can get so deep into prayer that you can touch heaven's throne. Amen. You can touch the feet of Christ, man. You can you can seek God so strong where you will feel the power and the presence of God fall so hard upon your life that you will, there will be nothing that you can't accomplish and you can take on the world and that all those around you will know that they must serve God because they come in contact with you. You know that you have that ability to do that? You have the ability to do that. But you know that none of that will happen if you don't pray. We have that ability if we pray. But you will never experience it or be a part of it if you don't. To be a Christian in the army of God, you must always be prepared. So when you come to the day of testing, you can fight with everything inside of you. Just make sure there's enough of God inside of you. There's got to be enough inside of you. There's an old football player called Jack Youngblood. He was one crazy individual. As his playoff performance, as, as his play, playoff performances in 1979 proved, Youngblood missed just one game in his 14-year NFL career. Imagine that. 14-year career. He missed one game. And that wasn't even church. That, wasn't, that had nothing to do with God. It was something he loved to do. You would have thought that the game would have been after the Hall of Fame linebacker broke his leg. But it wasn't. So young blood broke his leg in 1979 divisional playoffs against the Cowboys. But instead of missing the rest of the playoffs, he returned to action and ended up playing in the Super Bowl. He didn't give up. He missed one game in 14 years, and it wasn't because he broke his foot. It was because he continued to fight forward. He continued to move in the in the place in which he wanted to go. He knew that in order to succeed his lifelong dream, he was going to have to give everything he had, regardless of the pain, regardless of the hurt, regardless of the suffering, regardless of his feelings. He knew in order to get to become successful and leave the legacy he left behind, he had to fight with everything he had, regardless of his own personal pain and suffering. And he made it to the Super Bowl. D. Morhaman. A week after Liverpool's championship uh, league victory over AC Milan, Haman was ordered to have an x-ray by the German team doctor. Turns out he had broken his foot. That's what he says. He says, I can remember when I did it, but not how. I was determined to shake it off despite the discomfort. Haman said, I remember the Liverpool team's doctor pulling me, pull, putting some ice on it afterwards, but we were walking on air by then. Not only did he break his foot during the extra time, but Haman went on to get the ball rolling by scoring Liverpool's first penalty in the shootout. And all that mattered was that I scored, he said. There is a nation of people out there that are depending on what you are going to do. What we are doing, what are we doing when we are injured? Because Christian injuries isn't physical. A Christian injury, when I, when I remember, I was saved a couple of years, maybe two years, and I got into this really bad car accident like right here at the corner. 
really bad car accident. Car pulled out in front of us, hit us, and then we went across the, the medium and went head on with another car. Wasn't wearing a seat belt, I was in a small car. Alba went through this window, my head went through the front windshield. The dashboard came in, hit my knees, it was a mess. I had to go to therapy to begin to walk again. And, and it was a mess. And I remember, I remember during that time, I couldn't make it upstairs because we lived in a townhouse. I couldn't make it upstairs. I slept downstairs, I don't know, for months. And and I remember my dad and my brothers would have to help carry me to the car. I couldn't even sit up in the car. Martha would have to take me to the doctor and to physical therapy and I would have to lay back because I had, I just I had some anxiety about just seeing cars because it was a bad accident. But I remember with all the pain, couldn't walk, had a pillow, had to sit on a pillow, had to just, just, and I'm all, I was only about 23, 24 years old. I was messed up. And I remember it didn't matter. I'm going to church. Mm-hmm. I remember sitting in the back. We had full metal folding chairs. I brought a pillow, sat on a pillow, but I'm going to church. Mm-hmm. I wasn't going to let, I was going to see physical pain for a Christian. That's nothing. That's physical pain. We want to go to church. We want people to see I made it regardless of my physical pain. I'm there. Christian. Christian I am. Saved. <laughs> see, physical pain doesn't, doesn't kill us. We know it hurts. But we can make it through that. It's, it's, it's the emotional. It's the unseen pain. It's, it's the hurt. It's the confusion. It's the anger, the unforgiveness. That's our pain. See, I can I can clearly see how these how these two sports guys made it through their game and made it to their Hall of Fame. I can see how they did that. Because physical pain, that won't stop me from serving God at all. I've been through some physical pain and I don't care. I'm gonna serve God. As for me and my house, we're gonna serve the Lord. I'm gonna serve God. And that doesn't keep me from church. The things that want to keep me from church is when my family comes against me. Is when we have problems in my marriage, we're having problems in my finances. When I'm dealing with unforgiveness and I'm dealing with hurt and I'm dealing with pain, that wants to keep me from church. Mm-hmm. That wants to keep me from serving God. That wants to get the, my lamp to burn out so that I can't tell no one else about Jesus Christ anymore. Mm-hmm. That's what happens. See, when we, deal with, when we deal with the unseen pain, that keeps us from moving forward in the things of God. Have you ever told yourself, because we won't say it out loud, have you ever told yourself, I just don't feel like praying today? I know I need to pray, but I don't feel like praying. I'm going to read, but I just don't feel like reading. You grab your Bible, you begin to look at it, and yeah, I just don't feel like it, and put it aside. That's the unseen pain. See, the physical pain, you can have a back pain, or you'll be determined, ah, I ain't got my back pain. I'm going to read. I'll let the pain keep me awake so the Bible don't put me to sleep. Right? But that that unseen pain, that's, well, that's when things happen. That's when our lamp begins to need oil. That's when we get into the middle of the night in darkness, when our light's no longer shining. When we have nowhere else to turn and we try to tell the person next to us, hey, let me have some of your oil. And they say, hey, hey, you know what? I've been, I've been praying. I've been reading. I've been seeking God. I can't help you. Mm-hmm. I can say all the words. I can, all the words of encouragement to you, but they're not going to help you at this moment. You see, I'm not, I'm not, I can be an, I could be a motivational speaker, but I cannot be a person sitting to listen to a motivational speaker. Because words to me are just garbage. I just I don't, I don't got time for that. You know, let me see what you do. If you're going to do it, then I'll follow you and I can do it. If you're not, if you're all you're doing is being a motivational speaker, I ain't got to deal with that. When you're in a time of need, you need your own strength. The person's going to tell you all the motivational speeches they can give you. That if it was a speech at that moment, in the middle of the night, when it was just the two of you alone. That speech probably could have changed the world. But to you, it was just a bunch of words. Because the spirit of God in you has already been broken. Because we didn't develop that relationship. Mm -hmm. We didn't read his word. Matthew 5, 14 and 16.
Jesus says, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light, so sh let your light shine, so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Jesus says, you're the light of the world. You are on the hill that cannot be hidden. People know that you are a servant of Christ. Mm -hmm. People know who you are. People know who you are. They know who you are because we tell them who we are. People know I'm a Christian. Because I live as a Christian. And if they don't know it, I tell them I'm a Christian. You know why I tell them? Because I'm inviting them to church. I'm inviting them to accept Jesus Christ. I want, make, I want to make sure everybody who comes in contact with me knows I am a Christian. I am a man of God. I don't need to tell them. They'll see it through the way I live. But I make sure to tell them. Because now that gives me opportunity to pray with them. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a lamp. I'm a, a, a sitting on the side of a hill. I cannot be hidden. Jesus says, let your light so shine. Is there still oil in your lamp? Is your lamp shining? Can people see the light of God coming through your life? Mm -hmm. Because the non-physical hurts is what's keeping us out of the game. Mm -hmm. We just did an amazing outreach yesterday. Man, we, 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 made, we made some noise. Mm -hmm. We made some noise. We we're done. The pastors that were here, they were like, man, this is incredible. Because mm -hmm. we just did three of the other, three other churches. Ours was last. And ours just thinking fireworks and the whole bit was that was, was what we had. <laughs> they were amazed. Matter of fact, Pastor Rudy goes, man, Pastor Ben, I want to go last next time. <laughs> because we had momentum. People are coming. Fires are burning. There's oil that's burning in our lamps right now. There's oil in your lamp right now. If especially if you came yesterday, there's oil in your lamp right now. Your fire is shining, but sometimes you don't see it yourself. The problem is that you have enough oil in your lamp to keep it burning. Because coming in when everybody comes in, it's easy to get excited. Mm -hmm. But going home when you're alone, that's when the trials hit. Is there enough oil in your lamp to keep your own house lit? I'd like everybody about every eye closed for just a moment. Everybody about every eye closed, no one looking around just for a moment. These 10 virgins dedicated their lives for this day, for this opportunity to be seen. They waited for this moment for, for for God to let him into the wedding. Everything they did up until this point was everything they desired. But when they came, they were unprepared. They were not ready for what God had for them. They were not ready for what God wanted to do. You see, God wants to do something in your life. He wants to help you. He wants to, he wants to take you to a place that you've never been. He wants to use your life to touch other lives. The problem we have, the problem we have is we spend too much time looking for ourselves and not paying attention to what God wants for us. You see, God wants to do something in your life. He wants to help you. You're going through some problems, you're going through some issues. And we think being called a Christian is going to be enough to get us through, but it's not. We need, much, we need much more than that. We need God to be in the center of everything we got going on. And unless we begin to cry out to God, you're going to be found with no oil in your lamp, banging on the door and saying, let me into the wedding. And as Jesus said, he says, I do not know you. Could you imagine coming to church your entire life but never being prepared? God has God has a plan for you. So we're gonna we're gonna stand, we're gonna sing a song. 
But these altars are going to be open. When God spoke to you, I don't want you staying at your 